Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, July 14th. Okay, so we had the moon in Libra go void, of course, last evening at 6.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Scorpio energy here this morning at 10.54 a.m. So, of course, we've been in a void for a very long time now, pretty much overnight likely had a huge impact on our dreamscape, on our sleep state as well. We are entering into Scorpio energy, which means that the transition from Libran energy to Scorpio energy is always intense. It's always very much felt. Reason being, the Libran energy, we're kind of in the shallow end of the emotional pool, even though some people would want to kind of debate that fact because it has been a very emotional time seeing that we are in cancer season. And of course, we just had our first quarter moon pop off in this Libran energy as well, adding a little bit more intensity to what is normally a very shallow ended emotional realization. Now, we were kind of examining over the last couple of days the areas of our lives that are lacking peace and harmony and balance. And of course, that Libra energy really illuminated those extremes in order for us to choose to decide to take action to make a move to actually rectify some of these particular issues. That first quarter moon definitely put us in a state of indecision. Where should I stay? Where should I go? What needs to die? What needs to grow? Now we're moving into Scorpio energy. We're moving out of the intellectualized perception of our emotions to actually feeling them. So we have the sun still very much in cancer energy. That's a water sign. Now the moon is moving into a water sign. So we're definitely going to go through all of the feels. Now, Scorpio energy does kind of illuminate the shadow work that needs to be done. It is the inner change, the inner transformation that has to take place in our soul, in our spirit, before we're going to see the change, the transformation take place in the outer realm. So it's always very deep and intense and dark and passionate. But what we know to be true is that we're going to come out of the moon's transit through the Scorpio energy with a new power, a new sense of control, a new realization, a new path, a new direction for us to pursue. So with all of that being said, there are 12 different aspects taking place here today. So relatively a busy day in the cosmos, if I do say so myself, 11 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So let's jump into it. The moon, while still in Libra and energy, but still in the void, the moon is going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is an internalized analyzation of where it is that we have to boss up, where it is that we have to shift our belief system, where it is that we have to implement boundaries in our lives, where we have to create new routines in order to be the structure, the framework to actually see this new vision, this new goal actually manifest. Now, this particular energy is putting us in a good disposition because it is a positive interaction. Thank goodness for that, where we're a little bit more serious, a little bit more focused on what needs to be removed, what we have to let go of. We are in cancer season. This is about releasing. This is about detaching. This is about evolving and growing away from the pain, the trauma that has us very much stuck in the past. So this is going to give us a more serious and sound realization on what we have to build, what we have to create within ourselves in order to actually tap into a new willpower, a new discipline, a new determination to actually see new plans, new strategies through. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars, again, in the fixed earth sign of Taurus energy, we're going nowhere as fast because we have to build and cultivate the fire, the spark, the flame, the motivation, the determination within ourselves. 
Side note, things are going to pick up. Things are going to start moving very quickly in our physical realms. But right now, this is the inner realm renovation that needs to happen in order for us to be strong and confident and bold and brave and courageous enough to actually see the external changes through. So Mars in this particular energy is going to kind of fester the restlessness, the ants in the pants, the frustration, the agitation that we're currently experiencing by not seeing the green light out in our physical realm and so yeah that's super frustrating yeah we are building up a lot of pent-up aggression for not being able to break away from some of these old aspects in a quicker fashion than what it is that we're currently kind of stuck in again if you're frustrated with your external realm you have to look inward your external realm is a projection of how you think how you feel how you perceive how you understand from your inner realm if you want the external realm to change you have to change the internal realm first and foremost the moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter being the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Jupiter is in Gemini energy, again, very divided on the options, on the opportunities that we want to do, that we want to pursue. We are in a situation right now with Jupiter in this Gemini energy to have to open up our minds. We have to expand on some thoughts, some ideas, some concepts that we've been kind of back and forth about. The moon interacting with Jupiter in this way, we're on the fence. We're not really as optimistic and confident as we should be. We're not negative Nancy either, but again, the indecisiveness, the flip floppiness of that moon in Libra kind of has us on the fence, kind of has us torn. We're kind of meh about a lot of situations, a lot of options that currently we're just not feeling. Now the moon is going to make a very tough interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. So again, if this was a positive interaction, Uranus would be giving us some clarity, some insight would be kind of sparking a change within us to kind of see where it is that we need to break away from the old, where we have to try new methods, new ways of going about our life in order to create a different result. But this is a tough interaction, which means that we're sitting in confusion. We are sitting in a state of being closed off, closed minded to the changes that we know that we need to make. We're just not ready to make them as of yet. And of course, the indecision, the flip floppiness, the back and forth that the moon and Libra brings is not a very strong energy for us to kind of pivot and think about, you know, new things, new ways of going about life, new changes, new transformations. We're kind of clamming up at this particular point and we're kind of justifying why it is that we should just settle for current circumstances and why it is that maybe we don't want to change, why we don't want to transform. Again, this is just the egoic programming's way of keeping us in a state of paralysis. Now, the moon is going to make a very tough interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, is retrograde in its place of power in Pisces energy, which kind of signals to us that the moon is in the 29th degree. Why do we know that, you may ask? Well, because Neptune is at the 29th degree of this Pisces energy, has been for quite some time. This is a karmic degree. This is a critical degree. This is definitely pushing us inward and realizing where it is that we have to stop living in la-la land and actually deal with life as it is, not for the way we wished it would be, in order to wrap up particular cycles, particular chapters that karmically speaking, we've already withdrawn from, we've already detached from. But the remnants of those particular life cycles in the materialistic realm, we still need a completion point. So the moon interacting with Neptune in this way, again, not in the most favorable aspects. So we are sitting in confusion. We are overwhelmed. We want to curl up in a ball. We don't want to deal with reality. We want to run. We want to hide. It is not a good feeling, not a good vibe. 1054 AM Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to be locking into that Scorpio energy. So we are going to get a little bit of relief because being in a void, especially for that long, doesn't feel good. We're all over the place, scatterbrained and scattered emotionally speaking. The Scorpio energy, because it is a fixed sign, is going to stabilize us in a certain way. However, now the real work is going to take place. We have some shadow work to do. Keeping in mind 
that the Scorpio energy is the detective of the Zodiac. We have deep seated questions that need to be asked either of ourselves or the people in the world around us in order for us to kind of unearth where it is that some dark seeds have been planted in our psyche, limiting beliefs, limiting thoughts, limiting ideas, some negative narratives. All of this is going to be illuminated while the moon moves through the Scorpio energy. And that's how we come out on the other side, more empowered. We have to break things down in order to actually have a breakthrough. So about a half hour in to this moon in Scorpio, we are going to have the moon make a very positive interaction with Mercury. Now the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. He rules over the mental plane, thoughts, ideas, the way that we communicate, the way that we express ourselves. He's currently in Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. What does Scorpio energy and Leo energy have in common? They're both fixed signs. Fixed signs give us the ability to kind of stop to kind of pause, to take a breather, to take a good look around, to gain our bearing, so to speak, and stabilize from the up and down, the back and forth that we just came out of. And so although we're still very much in cancer season, the let's call it ocean of emotion is still very choppy. The moon and Mercury, they're on the same page. They are on the same page in regards to the, the fact that we need to, again, take a pause, take a good look around. The moon in Scorpio, again, we want to change. We want to transform. And Mercury being in this Leo energy, we have some big ideas. We have some big passion projects that we want to pursue. We have, you know, this heart and head alignment that's going on. We recognize where it is that we have to be a little bit more straightforward and forthcoming with our thoughts, with our ideas, with our emotions. We are essentially now realizing what we have to do to change ourselves to be the version of self that is capable, strong enough, confident enough to act actually start going after making the changes and transformations in our physical realm to actually bring to life this new goal, this new vision, this new idea. Now, you know, separately to that, this is what's going on within us. In our relationship dynamics, this is going to be a very good opportunity if you need this opportunity to actually speak the truth, to speak what is on your heart space, to be straightforward, direct, blunt in such a way that we're just speaking facts. Now, again, this is a, let's call it favorable aspect for communication, but that Scorpio energy, again, very much dissecting. We're reading between the lines of what it is that's being spoken to us. And again, and we are speaking from that heart space, but we are also receiving information in an extra sensitive level as well. So be very cautious and aware that if somebody is pouring their heart out to you, that you have to receive it in a good way, a better way to actually, I'm going to say, justify them being bold and brave and courageous enough to actually have this conversation with you. Now, things are going to take a little bit of a dive. That's usually how things go. We feel empowered, we have a realization, we take one step forward, and then that dark programming kind of kicks in to pull us on back. The moon in the Scorpio energy going to get into the boxing ring, square off, fight it out with Pluto. Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy. So this is an intensity because we're dealing with the ruler of the energy that the moon is currently in. Pluto being the great transformer himself, he is also retrograde in Aquarius energy, trying to show us in our inner realm where it is that the power struggle, the fight, the divide is alive and well. Now this is between the old version of self, the new version of self, the ego self versus the higher self, our inner realm with the outer realm. We have to identify where it is that we're feeling stuck, where we're feeling trapped. We have to do a deep dive in our psyche to see those seeds, where they get planted and who planted them in order for us to flip the script and kind of put ourselves in a better situation. We're constantly trying to improve. We're constantly trying to do better because of that Aquarius energy. And so the interaction here, first of all, a square is very indicative that we're going to deal with some heavy emotions here. It's going to get intense, it's going to feel pressurized. Why? Because a square is the point where we experience the conflict, the tension as a growing pain. We're about to grow in a big way. Issue here is, is that, of course, Scorpio energy is a fixed sign. Aquarius energy is a fixed sign and fixed signs resist change. We know we have to do it. 
We know we eventually will do it, but right now we're going to fight it for all it's worth. Now, the moon is then going to get into the boxing ring and square off with Venus. Venus, of course, fresh in this Leo energy. She's all up in the heart and soul. She's realizing what it is that she needs to do for herself to make herself feel good and happy and bring some joy and pleasure back into the realm. She's also following her heart as far as what she has to build, what she has to create, what she has to bring to life to feel safe and secure in her emotional realm, in her physical realm, in her relationship realm. So, of course, the moon getting into the boxing ring with Venus, again, growing pain, again, tension, again, conflict, because we're about to make a major move. It's been no joke. We've had a major change of heart. Now we actually have to get in alignment in our inner realm, first and foremost, before we can take action and make moves in our outer realm to actually pursue the path of happiness, of pleasure of joy, of making the changes in our physical realm, especially where relationships are concerned. We have a lot to get off of our chest before we're going to feel light and fluffy and cleansed enough to actually pivot and move on in a new direction. So emotionally speaking, we're not feeling good. We're not feeling so hot. We're feeling betrayed. We're feeling jealous. We're feeling this this, let's call it delayed reaction to some of the shit shows that have popped off. Suddenly, the intensity that we may or should have felt, let's say weeks ago when the initial situation popped off, it's almost like now this particular energy is now hitting us and we're able to feel it fully. Now, does it feel good? Absolutely not. Is it supposed to? 100% no. Is it 100% necessary in order for us to get it up and get it out of our body in order for us to move on? 100% yes. And that is why the square is a growing pain. We have to feel it in order to heal it. The moon is then going to make a very awkward interaction with Saturn. Saturn, of course, retrograde in this Pisces energy. This is a water on water action, but it's not one that is going to feel good. It's kind of one that is going to illuminate all of the wounds, all of the pain, all of the heaviness, all of the weight, all of the agitation. Why? Because we're de, let's call it deconstructing how it is that we have been operating, how it is that we have been putting our faith, our hope, our wishes in said vision. Again, Saturn in this Pisces energy, whether he's retrograde or not, he is deconstructing the old limiting false belief system. Okay, we're no longer in a state. That was the age of Pisces when we were in a state of belief. We are now creeping into the age of Aquarius, which is knowing. You can't know something and believe something. OK, belief can only exist in the absence of actually knowing. And so here we are, Saturn, especially in this Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a 30 year cycle, really putting us in a situation to take a good look at our hopes, at our wishes, at our dreams, at our delusions and where it is that we've created a particular belief system that is now being fact check. OK, sometimes you can believe in something until you get the evidence, the proof of a situation, and then you're no longer believing in it. Now you actually know it. But that shift that has to take place in your inner realm to truly understand that at your core is a very difficult one. Thus, the moon in Scorpio making the changes, doing the transformations to our soul, to our spirit. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter first, Neptune second. So let's talk about Jupiter first. Jupiter, of course, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Gemini energy, pushing the boundaries of our mental plane. Okay, so we're feeding off of this, you know, tension point with first Pluto, then with Venus, then with Saturn. So something must have popped off in that tension, in that conflict. We're having an aha moment. There's an awareness of sorts. Jupiter over here in the Gemini energy, pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, what we thought to be true, what we know to be true, expanding on certain perspectives, expanding on certain situations. Again, the moon and Scorpio being the detective of the Zodiac, we just unearthed new truth. We just unearthed some very interesting factoids, if you will, that's going to really help us understand the situations that have just kind of taken place with these karmic chapters closing and therefore trying to open up new ones. 
we're going to have a skewed perception. Reflecting back on those situations that just popped off, we have a different perspective. We have a different viewpoint. Now we have to piece it all together, release the energies and emotions that came along with thinking that it was a certain way. And now knowing that it was this way, now we have to rectify and reconcile our heart and our head. The moon, again, making this positive interaction with Neptune shortly thereafter, Neptune retrograde in this Pisces energy, this is water on water action in the best kind of way. Water energy cleanses, it purifies us. It heals us, it changes us, it transforms us. Why do I say that? Well, because water is the only element that can take on all three different forms. It is a liquid, it is a gas, it is a solid, depending on the energy that influences it to take on such a state. The moon and Neptune, first of all, this is a refresher. This is a renewal of our soul and our spirit. We're taking that information we just learned. We're kind of, you know, reformulating it in our perspective, in our understanding. We are getting rid of the emotions of the false belief system of our, let's call it, fake understanding of situations that no longer apply because now we have little bits of information and the truth. Now we're getting rid of those parts. And what we're left with is a much cleaner space, much cleaner slate in our emotions. Now this is going to kind of ramp us up to understand that our intuition is pulling us in a different direction now, especially seeing as we're seeing the past situations and circumstances from a different set of eyes. The last thing that we have going on here today is Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in this Leo energy. She's going to be making an awkward interaction with Saturn. So again, Saturn, he does kind of bring the mood down a little bit when he's not being aspected in the most favorable way. Saturn is going to kind of make us a little bit serious, a little bit more somber because we're all up in our feels. This is a heart activation. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast, I'm definitely going to recommend you do that. I explain in great detail the symptoms of a heart activation so that you can really stay ahead of the energies and not get freaked out when you have physical manifestations of when this energy is shifting. Venus and Saturn working in this way, giving us a very serious, very somber approach to our relationship dynamics. First of all, the relationship that we're building with this new version of self. Second, how the new wants, needs, and desires of this new version of self, pushing us away from certain people, pushing us towards other certain people. Basically, we have to do the hard thing. We have to do the right thing, which happens to be the hard thing, which means following our heart, putting our heart space first and foremost. And that may mean that we have to implement some boundaries. That may mean that we have to cut some people off. That may mean that we have to wipe our hands clean with some of these relationship dynamics because they're a part of the old karmic cycle that is coming to an end that essentially has already come to the end. We're just dealing with the debris, the remnants, the aftermath of what that karmic chapter is actually going to mean once removed out of our physical realm completely. 